In the leaner, meaner world we now occupy, it's no surprise that charities are having a tougher time. Fundraising has always been a fairly thankless task, never more than now, especially with 11,000 charities in Australia fighting for a slice of a shrinking pie. In the past five years, they've seen donations drop from almost $4 billion to just under $3.5 billion a year, and that's forcing some charities into alliances with companies who, in turn, are looking to woo customers with a conscience. It may be a new source of income, but it's also making some of the players very uneasy, as Libby Price reports. The Royal Melbourne War Show, in Room 7, we have the Riding for the Disabled. The next class to be judged is class 675. It's a Sunday afternoon at the Royal Melbourne Showgrounds, and members of the Riding for the Disabled Association are keen to show their riding prowess. That's the girl, you didn't steer him, steer him there. Also helping out are the family, friends and volunteers who make these events possible. Their commitment is admirable, but unfortunately it's not enough. This organisation needs cash to continue its good works. We've got a demand on our services which we can't meet. And the only way we can meet it is if we get um, community dollars which allow us to expand so that we can meet the demand. When you get to the next witch's hat, I want you to do a fast trot. Can you do a fast trot? This charity, like so many others, relies on an annual door knock for most of its income. Last year, contributions fell 25%. So, Riding for the Disabled has been forced to find new support. And that means putting its goodwill up for bids from business. Charity, in its conventional sense, is really a 19th century concept, which worked well for about 100 years. But in the last few years, um, I think people are rethinking their basic concepts of giving. That shift has taken Australian charities into the supermarket. It's called cause-related marketing, credibility for sale. Companies wearing their hearts on their products and promotions, with charities sharing in the profits. It's proving lucrative for business and a lifesaver for voluntary organisations. But like any corporate endeavour, there's risk. Cause-related marketing is a relatively new concept where a non-profit or a charity forms a business relationship with a corporate or a brand. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Some of the examples here are brands in supermarkets. For example, this product benefits World Vision. It's a program called Choice for Life. And really, it's all about getting the customer motivated to buy this product over its competitor because it benefits one of their favourite charities. Hayley Cavill is a new age marketeer, something of a matchmaker, bringing non-profit agencies together with businesses. I suppose I see myself as a marriage broker. You know, you've, you've got the non-profits on one planet and you've got the corporates on another. Their mission, their goal is completely different. The corporates is to make money, the non-profit is to save the world or feed the hungry or save the whales or whatever. She helps charities turn their goodwill into a marketable commodity, which companies in turn use to sell their goods. The company uses a charity's logo on its product, the charity gets a percentage from the sales. Haley's clients include World Vision, Diabetes Australia and First National Real Estate. But cause marketing does have its critics. Not the least fundraisers themselves, concerned about hitching their wagon to an enterprise that goes wrong. What you're putting at stake in that transaction is your services and the families and kids that you represent. So if you make the wrong decision, if you tie yourself in with an unethical organisation or an organisation that perhaps has some problems later on, you, you put those family and kids at risk of being dragged along with it. Nothing on earth is more valuable than children, and yet 35,000 children die every single day in poor countries. Global relief agency World Vision counts itself among the winners in cause marketing. With the help of a few celebrities, it's raised $1 million for the cause. In the last two years, their logos appeared on packaged food, coffee, tea and pickle bottles. The next time you go shopping, please buy the brands that save children's lives. Save a child. It's the most valuable saving you'll ever make in a supermarket. The companies aligned with World Vision won't reveal how much sales have risen, 
but six of the seven are continuing the partnership. You're selling uh, people in the community an opportunity to do something for their community by buying a product or doing something. It's quite easy to do. Uh, that's about all we can offer. And there are dangers. It can be, can be unethical. It can be seen as uh, selling kids, selling families. Uh, so I think we have to be very careful in the way we present what we're doing. And the beauty of the Westpac Salvo's partnership... The writing for the Disabled Association is proceeding with its pursuit of a corporate partner. Lewis George is hoping Haley will swing the board and that cause-related marketing will be the solution to their fundraising problems. I think people who want to ride with us should be able to, unless we get the money to buy more horses, to uh, expand our professional coaching services, uh, to run bigger and better events in which more people can participate, um, then uh, we're not meeting our community mission. It's as simple as that. Louis Price with that report, and that's the program for tonight. Thanks for your company. Good night.